What is up, you guys? Not here to waste your time, as you know. And actually, if you look over to the left, I think, of me, as you can see, we've got a center at seven foot, 237 pounds with a 7'3 wingspan. So if you want to set that up right now already while I say all the things you don't actually want to hear, then you can go ahead and do that. That leads me into saying, of course, like, comment, subscribe, anything, nothing if you don't want to, totally fine, but it would be appreciated because it helps the channel, it helps me, it helps us, it helps the community grow, and if the video helps you in any way at all, I would appreciate if you could just give a little bit of love back with some of that. In addition to that, we are on social media. All of it is linked below. You don't have to follow me on any of it, but if you have any questions other than just in YouTube comments or you wanna have a little bit more conversation, feel free to hit me up on Twitter or X, whatever you refer to it as, and you can join the Discord as well. We're gonna get a lot more more active in the discord i've got a full discord everything set up it's already ready and it should be linked down there as well it is linked down there as well so join the discord i'm gonna set it up so that there's more specific 2k chats in there so we can find groups we can run with each other all of that stuff because i do want to start getting back into streaming as well as just interacting with you guys more than just putting out a video per se so now that that's out of the way we've got jay sandy in here again with us because this is his center he helped us on the builder secrets for the big man video um and he's gonna come in here and talk about a couple things as well just whenever we need it because i have played center and i do have a center build and i play here and there but i don't use standing dunk or a lot of the things that he uses I, it's just not my play style so he's gonna come in here and help us out with a couple specific things as we talk about the build from top to bottom let's get right into it all right so we've got a center seven foot 237 pounds with a seven three wingspan so again like we say in all the videos everything starts right here so seven foot 237 Seven and the seven three wingspan there's a reason for all of those things if you put lower wingspan you're going to be able to get like a higher three ball but you'll probably get less rebound if you put your weight up you'll also get more rebound but you'll get less speed you'll get more strength all types of stuff like that so it just starts here and again like we say you've got to know what you want so this is jay sandy's build like we said this is the joker build that you guys saw from the jump shots video we're just going to do a proper video on the build itself now um, but this is what he's running and what he runs most of the time and he's run this in pro am threes park uh rec fives whatever this build at least for him and what he's capable of is versatile he can play with it anywhere and he's not lacking he's not slow getting up and down the court as you can as you'll see this build has this max 69 speed with the 61 acceleration not that that's fast per se but we maxed it out that way it wasn't any slower than it needed to be you know so for him and what he's capable of he uses this everywhere whether you'll be able to do that or not i don't know you need to know yourself and again like we say this is just a template you've got to adjust certain things here and there to make it work best for you and that's kind of what we believe to be the meta the meta is what works best for you what makes the most sense for you obviously if you don't use standing dunk like for instance i don't utilize standing dunk at all it wouldn't make any sense for me to have a 92 standing dunk because that's not my play style I'd probably invest into more shooting, maybe more driving dunk, but I wouldn't invest into such high standing dunk. So if that's you, you know, then take away the standing dunk on this build and put those points elsewhere. Getting right into it, and Sandy's probably just gonna take over and talk about this just because I don't use close shot and I also don't use standing dunk, but this is the build. Pull out, this is exactly how he runs it. 90 mid range, 78 three ball. You see, we've got the 92. O rebound with the 86 D rebound, which there's specific reasons for that as well. Interior is up to 61, which is gonna get you just bronze anchor, which is really all you need. And he is like the main center and he's a bigger body, like he's down there. But honestly, at least in the game modes that we play and that we regularly run into, which we always say again, but we play the game modes I already mentioned, right? We're in pro AM threes, we're in rec fives, things like that. We're not running into the pure inside center who's backing you down if you don't have interior. We run into that maybe once a month, like literally, like we do not run into that very often. Um, So having the interior defense is really just for that one guy or that one person running that build. And we don't run into that enough. And we also aren't huge believers in interior defense per se. I mean, if you get the body positioning and you wall up, you're gonna be able to stop whoever's coming in there. You know, as long as you catch them far enough up in the paint, you'll be able to stop their momentum. Um, If they put you into a back down, you know, and they back you all the way down then that happens but that very rarely happens to us and even if you do get back down to that if you're good with blocks and just walling up and knowing how to stop 
what they're going for. Because for a standing dunk, for instance, the way to get a really good one, and Sandy will talk about this when we get to it, is squaring up with the rim. So Sandy utilizes standing dunk a ton on the offensive end, but that helps him on the defensive end in knowing how to stop it. Totally up to you. Again, just a template. You can totally change some things. We've got the 51 ball handle, which is probably just there. Yep, naturally, just because of the passing. And the 86 passing is enough, and you'll see that when we show some clips. And we've got the 40 speed with ball. And again, that's just kind of the, we talk about it a little bit, but like the 40-40 is very good with ball handle and speed with ball. And not that Sandy's looking to break anyone off by any means or ISO, but uh, he has before it's not like a regular thing by any means but you know if we're clowning and just joking around it is something that he's capable of um not in a highly like repetitive or like usable fashion but it's worth having just to have that way when you do get the ball in whatever scenario it is you're not slower than you need to be so we've got the 41 here 92 free throw because we believe in that we're going to start from the top from the bottom like we typically do but i just wanted to go through a couple things just right off the rip just to show you guys and kind of give you a little frame of reference but we'll start at the top with close shot being at 80. you get good badges you get the fast twitch fearless finisher masher you guys can see them all post fade phenom dream shake hook specialist hall of fame pro touch gold giant slayer and you're already seven foot spot finder on bronze and you get the silver whistle so i don't utilize close shot per se sandy's gonna know specifically about these thresholds and what is good or bad i'm pretty sure he's had higher close shot at times um and he came down and again that's just utilizing the builder and the points of knowing like not investing too little but then also not investing too much at least for you and what you're you're capable of. Sandy's run higher close shot. He came down to the 80. He had no issues, saw no difference. So if he's making new builds now, he's not really investing over that 80 because for him, in order to be effective, that's what he needs. And, and it's still very, very consistent. And it's like totally you're able to use it. And he'll go into detail and talk to you guys about that. But again, it's kind of just utilizing the builder, knowing what you want and just not under investing and not over investing. So close shot, Sandy, that's all you. Yeah. So Obviously you see the fast twitch badge, but you get that more gold because of the standing high standing dunk. But the badges that you really want to look for and I think are very key with the close shot is the fearless finisher, the masher and the pro touch. So all three of those badges are very, very important and are all are set that way because of the close shot. And that helps with your driving layups. Even though your driving layup is only 45, that pro touch when you're driving towards the rim it still gives you that higher green window. And then same with the fearless finisher, you're able to finish close to the rim with contact. And then also masher where you're able to finish on smaller defenders and that just helps you a ton. So I think 80 is the perfect range. Um, you are able to do some hook shots, nothing <laughs> crazy. Um, if you're wide open, you're able to get it. But uh, I think 80 is a good, a good threshold. Um, I've had 90 before, but just didn't utilize it for um, for the cost that it was. So I think 80 is, is very, very good to go up with those offensive rebounds um, and after you get it and, uh, and finish close to the rim with uh, smaller people around you. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, so that too, like like you said, like <clears throat> some things just, they get expensive and it's like, it's not that 90 close shot is bad or anything over 80 is bad or not worth it. It is worth it. But for him and his play style and how he utilizes specifically close shot, 80 is all that he needs. And that's where you guys need to know what you need, you know, and, and again, just use this as a template and switch things up to make it work for you. We're not saying that over 80 is pointless. He's just saying, in order to get everything else where he wanted it, have the high shooting, he's got a 90 mid range, right? Maybe you don't do that. And if you use more close shot or even you're a pure inside, now you're you're talking a whole different game. But for him and how he plays and he's versatile everywhere, right? He's destroying in the mid range. He's shredding at the three point. And yes, a 78 three ball absolutely shreds at the three point. And for some reason, Sandy specifically is more green on a 78 than he is on an 86 or a 92. When I hit him with a 78, if he's got take, he's standing deeper than I do. I shoot pretty safe for the most part, but Sandy, like if he's got take and even though he's got the 78 three ball, he's standing so deep off that hash and he's greeting them when I hit him, assuming that he's open. So again, that's his capabilities, but it's, it's just showing you what a 78 is capable of still. So, but either way, like he has to be able to have all of these things up, right? So the close shot at 80 is perfect for him with the rest of the build with like having all the other attributes where they're at throughout the build is what like determines, so to speak, the close shot being at 80. Like you said, he's had 90. He just didn't utilize it for what it was worth. And he got to save those points because they start getting expensive the higher you go and he got to invest them elsewhere. Where he put them specifically, I don't know, but that's the overall concept and kind of what we preach, so to speak, in the builder is just like, again, just don't underinvest, don't overinvest. Driving layups 45, I assume that's just based, that's just naturally, yeah? Yes. 
And now do you get the default small or whatever on a big man or no? Not default small, you just get default big. Okay, and how is that? Um, it's good. It's it, you're able to, like I said, the pro touch helps a ton because you see there, you also yeah. get the fearless <clears throat> finisher silver that that has to do with the layup and the pro touch hall of fame, yep. which is just huge and, and very key mm -hmm. to help increase that green window, even with a smaller layup. And, uh, I have right now, my build isn't even maxed out yet. And, uh, the, uh, the 25 driving layup that I have gives me more than enough of a green window. Gotcha. Yeah. So low layup is still totally usable um and even on my builds and i've got videos so like i told you guys in the past video i've got a Kyrie build actually sandy has a Kyrie build as well we both made one i made one with dunking he made one with super high layup um but my layup isn't even invested into on that build it's at like 34 or something and what do you, you only need 24 to get the default small right sandy yes okay so 24 to get the default small and default small is like and i even said i might make a video specifically on it but it's really really good and it's very usable and yes you can use it on a regular base and effective do you get the glitchy layups that you get out of demar DeRozan or lebron no you're not getting yanked from the free throw line but like can you finish effectively at the rim if you need to with a layup yes absolutely um they're super super underrated and i do want to make a video on that but that to say that's just default small but he's using default big obviously because he's on a seven foot center but don't underestimate the power of those one you're not using them on it's not your go-to it's not your number one anyways like you you've got 90 mid-range will probably go for a midi whether it's a fader a post fade because you've got 85 post control or whatever but in whatever situation if you get there yes you can finish effectively and again like you said like that hall of fame pro touch pro touch is a goaded goaded badge and i have a lot of builds with very high layup 88 layup 90 layup and things like that and pro touch and float game are my favorite badges to get alongside a fearless finisher um but they're very very good badges so i mean yeah your layup is high but Pro Touch is one of those badges that absolutely helps and makes a difference regardless of that. So 45 driving layup again, it's just there naturally, but I just wanted to hit on it real quick and kind of just talk about that. Driving dunk, we've got it at 65. At 65 specifically, do you unlock the package that I'm thinking of? Um, at 65 driving dunk, you unlock the Dwight Howard package and it's 65 by default because you have an 80 vertical. Okay, okay, sweet. Okay, so that so we didn't even invest into that intentionally per se. The, we, yes. we were more focused on the vertical and it put that there. Right. Okay, yeah. cool. But 65 driving dunk is really good. Um, at least I know on guards at the 65 driving dunk, you get those those ones, those fast ones, those side clutches, I believe it is. Yes. Um, I don't know if you get those on a big man or not, but 65 and 75 driving dunk, uh, you unlock some pretty good packages um, there. So again, we're just there by default on this, but he regularly does get some like decent driving dunks. And like, again, you're not a floor spacing slasher and you're not going for meter dunks or anything like that. But if you're open and you get past the defender in whatever capacity that is, 65 driving dunk they're not going to pull you out of the animation especially just with like how big he is already and whatnot anyways and we're you're not really going up in coverage you know you're not you're going up on the on the break off like you broke him off you're past him you're open you're you're, you're not taking it like with people down there so 65 is gonna absolutely allow you to finish and if they are behind you or they come for the chase down or whatever it's not gonna pull you out of that animation just because it's so low honestly 36 driving dunk which i'll show you guys on my new build when i make that video but 36 driving dunk i'm getting like some decent finishes on the fast break but still kind of covered and whatnot and i'm like throwing it down so driving dunk um is something that i've been kind of off and on about um i've run builds with 94 87 90 36 55 um i think i'm getting better at dunking just in general so i'm starting to like it more but i mean even 36 is usable and i get a lot of points just on fast break now is he going to utilize his or are you going to utilize yours on a center build on a fast break probably not you're probably not on that fast break but there are still ways for you to utilize it and again we did invest into speed and acceleration to the max capacity so you're still sometimes gonna get matched up on another big that didn't, you know? And that's how I love to play this game is with the mismatch. Sandy can get back doors, he can cut, and I send him on cuts very often. So I'm the point guard and one, Sandy on this build, I love him on this build. He's effective everywhere on the court, whatever I need. Um, and then two, like, like I said, like, the 65 driving dunk, if I'm sending him on a back door or even a cut from the wing, he's very effective just with that 65. Again, it's just there because the vertical's at 80, which you need for rebounding, but it's a very good driving dunk. And specifically the package that you get out of it was what? 
was Dwight Howard. At Dwight 65, Howard. Along with the standing dunk. Along play. with the standing, for sure. Yeah. The standing dunk up to 92. Again, this will be another Sandy thing, but as you can see, you get all these badges gold, right? You're getting fast switch, rise up, aerial wizard, and precision dunker. Standing dunk 92, what you got? So um, I've had 90 for the most part all throughout my big men that I've had, and I would be able to get standing dunks, but sometimes it just wouldn't feel as effective. So going to that 92, and uh, keeping it cheap and cost effective, you get that fast twitch gold. And that fast twitch gold is a game changer of a badge. Um, I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but just sometimes on my other big men builds in the past, mm -hmm. I just wasn't getting those contact standing dunk meter kind of dunks. And I think that had to do with the fast yeah. twitch. So raising that up just mm -hmm. two points, sacrificing maybe a little bit of the close shot or a little bit of the three pointer, you know, stuff like that. Um, bringing the passing down able anything you can do to get that 92. I think it's one of those things that if you want to utilize a standing dunk and really be very effective down there, you'd want to have that 92 standing dunk because you're just able to get such good animations um, and, and contact standing dunks and putbacks, all that kind of stuff. You you would just, it's just one of those things that you can't mm -hmm. go without if that's what you want to utilize it with. And and that's not even just with meter. So, and, and I don't know if this is why you switched, but I do know this. So Chef on his big man that you also saw in the jumper video, the 7-3 Yao build that we had, Chef is it like one, Chef is just really, really good at this game and he understands it. And he's hilarious in the paint. <laughs> doing post moves and post spins and dunks and all this stuff. But Sandy was always using the meter, which is absolutely effective and I totally recommend it. And I as well use the meter on my driving dunk when I have it. But Chef was getting 30, 40 points a game in the paint, just doing pump fakes and just going up with X. And what he was utilizing was fast twitch specifically. Um, and it was a very, very good badge. And I do remember at one point us telling Sandy, cause he was like, as he was mastering the meter, you know, and getting better at it, it is a learning curve. You got to square up, right? You got to pump fake them, right? You got to know when it's not an easy thing to do per se. Um, but if you put a little bit of time and you can totally master it, it's not like it's totally, you can figure it out. But Sandy was always going for a meter, always going for a meter. And at some point we were kind of just like, you don't have to meter that. Like you don't have to meter that. You could just go straight up with it. And he wasn't necessarily a believer in that fast switch and never kind of utilized it. And chef, uh, I think they went into the Gatorade, whatever, but Chef was like, yeah, like literally just like this or whatever. And now Sandy has even more of a bag because he's not going for the meter. And if the meter isn't there because he's not perfectly square, he doesn't, you know, think it's there, he's getting doubled or whatever it is, he actually might get a better dunk an animation just out of the fast twitch and going up with X off of a pump fake and whatnot. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Just yeah. holding up on the stick, you know, yeah, yeah. for those dunks. <clears throat> yeah, so fast switch, super, super good. Anything about rise up or a precision, precision dunker is totally worth it. I use it on my builds. I actually, that Kyrie build I just made, I went to 90 driving dunk specifically just to get precision dunker and I floor set it and it pops up all the time. And 90 dunk is like very, very good, but 94 with the 82 vert is much better. And if you're talking dunk meter and like how that works and all of that, it's a big difference. So going to that 90 for me, just getting that gold precision dunker made a huge difference on my green window and just being able to effectively finish at the rim at a high rate. So I believe in precision dunker and that's my take on it, but what about rise up? Um, rise up is just another good badge to have underneath the basket. It just helps you get those animations um, to get that contact dunk or anything like that whenever you're um, getting that offensive board and you wanna go right back up with it. It mm -hmm. just gives you that extra vertical boost to rise up over the over the defender and, yeah. and slam it down. And that's another thing too, like just in general. So at 90, which he ran at before, and it's not, again, this isn't saying that 90 isn't good. This is just saying at 92 is where he, where Sandy liked it better. But if you're gonna talk about like layering badges, which is a very big thing. So like me at the point guard, for instance, I'm like layering speed booster with blow by and like handles for days. Like I'm, I'm, you're comboing all these things together. It's the same when you're shooting. If you're shooting in the corner, like for me, I want to activate catch and shoot. Corner specialist is gonna activate 100%. If I'm there long enough, or if you hold that trigger for a split second before you catch the ball, now you've got Claymore, and now I'm stacking badges. Plus I'm stacking green machine if I've already greened some, right? So stacking badges is a thing. It's not really something you need to think about. Like once your badges are there, that's kind of just gonna happen naturally. But if you talk, if we're talking about stacking badges, now you're stacking four golds rather than three golds and a silver. How big of a difference does that make? I don't know. I don't have a test on it. I don't really know, but like logically just looking at it, would it, uh, it makes sense, right? So 85 post control now. We just talked about stacking badges. You're also stacking 
attributes in the builder, right? So he's got 85 post control. He also has 86 strength. So strength and post control are going hand in hand. You can use your strength on the defensive and on the offensive end of things. So the 85 post control with the high midi is getting him that Hall of Fame post fade phenom, which is a goaded goaded badge. However, if you don't use post fades, then maybe you don't really care. And what I would say from there is if you don't go 85 per se for the post fade phenom, you can go to 92 and you can get the gold unpluckable. Um, unpluckable is probably a pretty good badge for big men. Um, Sandy doesn't need it and probably doesn't feel a reason to need it. But just so you guys know, there are other reasons for post control as well. Post control is super, super cheap. So even if you don't utilize the post, but you just had you know, a bunch of points to just chilling or whatever. You get up that post control to 92 and it'll, at the very least, it'll just get you the gold unpluckable. Um, so that's kind of a little hack there. It's also, that's in our builder secrets video as well for big men. So if you haven't seen that or you want more frame of reference just on a big man and to see other builds, go check out that video. But 85 post control, post fade phenom specifically is what we get out of that hall of fame. Well, and you're getting unpluckable silver, which again, we just talked about unpluckable, but 85 with the post fade phenom hall of fame is great. And Sandy utilizes post fades a ton. He honestly, on this build, one with his play style and on this build, Obviously it's made for his play style, but like he does everything. He's operating in the post, whether that's backing someone down, drop stepping them and going up with a, with a dunk. He's taking a back door and getting a driving dunk. He's utilizing the post and using post fades out of that. He's utilizing the mid range and whatever capacity that is. That does mean a fader at times. Sometimes he does that. That could also mean standing at the free throw line if they're in a zone or if just no one's guarding it. Cause that's a spot that people tend to forget about. He's sitting at the free throw line. He's pulling up a midi. He's at the three point. Again, we already talked about that three ball. He's absolutely finished there effectively and at a high rate he's just a threat it's a three level threat like he can score everywhere in every capacity um so it's really good and and honestly pretty elite i guess driving dunk isn't too elite i mean it's 65 i'm not going to go ahead and give it the title as elite but standing dunks 92 he's elite there mid-range is 90 you're elite there Three ball is 78. You can be elite there, and Sandy is elite at a 78 three ball. Me, I actually had to go up from a 78 to an 86 to really find my best. I even tried a 92, and I realized, yeah, basically 86 is where I lie. At 78, sometimes I stand a little too deep, just like if we really need something and I'm just not able to hit. 92, I don't stand deep enough or utilize it enough to have the 92, but 86 for me, it's that sweet spot right in the middle where I'm like, okay, when I have take, I can back off and I'm still gonna, like effectively finish if we really need that. But for the most part, I'm a safe shooter. My toes are almost on the line, touching the line every time I'm shooting. That's just how I play. Um, but that's just what works for me. But besides the point, he's elite across the board on this build with how it is. Um, so it's just all together, just really good. Three ball 78. So you get the catch and shoot. And now we're talking again about the layering badges, right? Catch and shoots gold. And, and he actually does this a lot. Sandy doesn't actually have eyes. So Often he'll catch the ball and not see that nobody's on him and that he's open. And then he'll shoot it late and he might miss it. And it's not specifically because he's not activating catch and shoot, but it will benefit you more by stacking that badge and activating the catch and shoot. Because Sandy on a big man, he's not really moving off ball unless he's bringing up a screen and he's popping or something like that. He's probably chilling in the corner and just trying to stay out of the way and be able to crash for a rebound. So catch and shoot, Claymore, corner specialist, those are all going to activate for him almost every time he shoots, like if he's in that corner, right? But usually we put our guys in the corner, uh, whether it's a big man or a lock or whatever, who can crash with a rebound just because it's the quickest point for them to get to the rim and, and crash that. And the rest of us, like me and Chef and our guards, faster guys, more shooters, stay at the top and work around up there. And then J Sandy's crashing from the corner and whatnot. So he's already in that corner. So if we throw up the shot, he's gonna crash and he's gonna be elite at getting that board. But if he doesn't and we hit him and he's open or whatever it is, he's off the rip, you're, you're stacking these three badges. You're stacking catch and shoot, claymore and corner specialist. And because you have such a high midi, you're getting other badges like dead eye and blinders and green machine, you're getting them up to gold. So all in all, just really, really good. That high midi, which is cheaper than a three ball is really gonna help you unlock other badges at a higher tier. So the 9078 is great. Um, I even have a build that has 9086 uh, because I just couldn't get to that 92. You guys know by now I love 92 mid range, but 90 is very, very good um because you're also getting hall of fame open looks so actually he's going to stack that claymore catch and shoot green machine hall of fame open looks all of that is going to activate for him if he's shooting out of that corner and he's just chilling and hall of fame open looks is such such a good badge any open looks is a good badge but hall of fame is hall of fame and open looks is going to apply 
across the board, which I've said before, whereas like post fade phenom, right, is gonna work in post fade specifically, or catch and shoot is gonna specifically work on a catch and shoot, but open looks is gonna work whether it's a catch and shoot, whether it's like you've had it and you're pulling up or whatever it is. So open looks, hall of fame, go to go to badge so that 90 mid range if you can get it there if you're going to invest in your mid range high i typically go with an 84 or an 86 depending on the height of the build i might go 88 for a specific jumper which we should talk about that sandy and then 90 to 92 is my preferred 90 for the hall of fame open looks so sandy about these two with the 90 and the 78 we went and I, I mean you utilize the mid range a ton and whatnot anyways and your jumper actually the jumper that he uses on this build is in our jump shots video so you can go check that out but if you don't know having a higher mid range is going to help you unlock those bases so at minimum on a big man where are you at sandy and why um at a minimum i would say probably an 84 um because you're able to get that mini magician uh gold you know and if you're able to uh, bring that down you're probably able to invest a little bit more in ball handle and you're able to work that mid-range a little bit differently um the middle tier that i would go is 86 yeah. and that will help you with the post fade phenom hall of fame and then obviously i went to um, you do get a little bit more badges, but the main reason I went for it is because of the Kevin Durant jump shot base. Um, I love that base a lot. Um, I found out that's the, probably my greenest that I've been with that base, so I specifically invested to get that. Um, obviously, if you think uh, Jonathan Isaac is also a very good big man <laughs> base that people use, so you can obviously sacrifice a little bit less to uh, get that base and uh, maybe you can uh, make your wingspan a little bit bigger so you can get that higher rebounding, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so just 90 is what I love because I'm able to get that Kevin Durant base and, mm. and unlock the best jump shot that I believe is uh, for a big man. Yep, yep. So, and that too, so like the Kevin Durant base, there's two Kevin Durant bases in our last jump shot video, and then there's a different base that Chef has on his 7-3. Um, also all the requirements for each jump shot so even if you're looking for a specific jump shot on a big man and you're also making a big man you can check out both of those videos i'm not trying to self-plug but the information is there um you don't even have to watch the whole video just skip you know to that jumper specifically and it's got all the requirements or look it up you know before you fully invest in something because you don't want to be one tick away from the jumper that you want i've made that before before um i really knew about the t-mac base i was always going to 86 but then when i was on a 6 8 i needed to go to 88 Eight, I believe it was in order to get the T Mac um, 88 mid range. So I had a build that I made with 86, and then I went to go get the jumper, and I didn't realize. And I, I had to remake the build. I didn't have to, but I chose to remake the build. Um, and I gave it the 88 because I just needed that T-Mac. So 90 mid range, 78 three ball, 92 free throw. You don't have to go this high in free throw. We love high free throw. Free throws are not free by any means at all. So the higher free throw, the better. Your tiers are gonna be at 71. You're gonna get the bronze. I personally am very, very consistent at 71. So what I do, and we talk about this in Builder Secrets as well, but you've gotta have your non-negotiable on your builds. So for you on a big man, like your non-negotiables are gonna be rebounding, strength, vertical, stamina should probably be all the way up. Your block should be up. So I would go and set those and then I'd also come up to free throw and I'd put it at the very least at 71 because I know I'm consistent at 71. And then I would go through the rest of the build and I would set it how I want. And then at the end, if I can invest in a free throw more because everything else is like right where I want it. For instance, this build right now, everything is where Sandy wants it. He didn't put the free throw up and then let other things be lower because he wanted high free throw. Set everything else how he wanted. And he's like, okay, well I have more points. What's super cheap? Free throw is super cheap and post control is super cheap. We talked about he doesn't need the higher post control. So you go into free throw, how high can I put it? Oh, I can max it out to 92 and now we're good to go. So you don't have to do that, but that's kind of how we go about it. I would say the 80 threshold for the silver free points is really, really good. At the very least, I go like 80, 81. Um, and you're gonna be very consistent at the free throw, but if you can go higher than that and it's super cheap, then why not? So we went up to 92. 86 passing, maybe a little controversial, so to speak, for a big man. Why do you have below 90? Why do you have below 91? Uh, there's no real argument here. For us in what works, this works. And pass is so, so expensive. Now I've talked about this on my guard videos and I've even brought it up about big men, but I run now 77 passing on my guards. Um, if I want to make a guard that ha that has a bit more elsewhere, whether it's in shooting or dunking or whatever it is, I'm willing to sacrifice the 87 pass, which gets you the bronze bailout as a guard for the 77 pass. Now, that's for me on a guard. That to say, on my center and on Sandy's center, 
he, we've got 86 and we think 86 is absolutely enough as well. I personally have run 91 pass and I didn't see a difference on my guard from 91 to 86. I do see a difference at 77. The only difference that I see though is not the accuracy or the pass itself. It, well, it is the pass. It's just the time. It's not as much of a steamer um, per se, but it doesn't affect us or me in enough of a way for it to matter. But is there a difference? Yes. But from 86 to 91, I personally didn't see a difference. And can you run LeBron James pass style? Yes, 85 so is what I, you need. So I choose to run that. I don't know if Sandy, which, what do you run? Yeah, that's what I run as well. Okay, so he runs LeBron. So LeBron is one of the best passers like ever. Um, so I think his pass style is gonna be kind of a little all right. So we have no issues there, um, but for us, this is more than enough. Now, again, if you get everything where you want it in the build and you have extra points and it shows you can invest into pass accuracy and you want a higher pass accuracy, invest into it or make it one of your non-negotiables and put it up when you start the build and then go from there. Uh, but for us, 86 is totally enough. You're getting gold break starter, great. Gold post playmaker, great. And gold special delivery, great. So, uh, all in all, just well. Uh, needle Threader at Bronze is like doing great for me at 77. Uh, again, the only difference I'm seeing on my passes is just, it, instead of such a straight line, they're kind of a little bit more of a of a little arc to them, but I'm still throwing dots and I'm still throwing full courts. And you guys have seen that in past videos and we'll see that in some future videos. Uh, but 86 passes where we're at. Uh, you could also run Sabonis, yeah? Yes. Yeah, so I like Sabonis at 77 passing. That's what I'm running now because I can't get LeBron or anything else. Uh, but but is that limited to us in our rep level? No. Okay, sweet. So Sabonis, really good pass style. I enjoy it. Chef actually doesn't like it. He runs John Morant, but I hate John Morant and most people hate John Morant, but Chef likes what he likes and that's totally fine. Use whatever you want. But Sabonis, really good pass style that I would recommend. Would you recommend it for outlets though? And for what you're doing or no? Sabonis? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, um, so yeah, it, 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 it'll be good enough, yes. Yeah. Um, I've run, I think, 77 passing on my Bosch build and still get decent outlets. Yeah. Um, that's the only thing with the passing is like the difference of outlets. Um, yeah. I've had 92 um, passing before and getting those uh, better passing styles and getting that break starter Hall of Fame is pretty, like, you, you can tell a difference, but. It, it you know, totally like makes said, a difference. You, you, it, it, it totally makes a difference and you totally see it, but you'd agree, sometimes you still, for no reason at all, just throw the ball out of bounds. Yes, and, and of course, like, I, and I want to be, like, I want to be effective elsewhere. Elsewhere, so exactly. If I so I want to get that that ninety two standing dunk and be more of a, a kind, not a selfish player, but utilize my bag and uh, be and able have to fun. do a little bit of everything and have fun. Yeah, and uh, that's what I just I brought that passing down from my other builds and down to eighty six because it wants you. I mean, it it is actually pretty cheap for a big man, mm -hmm. um, but also that that 86 to 92 or that 86 to 90 is a bit pretty expensive yeah it's so expensive bringing Passing's that expensive. down and you're able to get it get up that close shot that midi that standing dunk yeah. all that kind of stuff just it, it's it counts yeah for me on a guard running 77 passing for the first time i was like holy crap i can make a totally different build now and like be so much more effective in all these other places like i wouldn't be able to have the because i love being a two-way i love defense i love having perimeter i love having steel i love having block and shoot if i can even get the bronze rebound chaser i'm gonna put it there i just love that but again i also push the ball and i love that i just like being in control and i have control issues so that just is what it is but at 77 pass act um i'm still feeling like good and when i put that lower because of how expensive it was i was like holy crap i can do so much more so same here 86 to 90 like it's or 92 or 91 is going to make a very big difference um and you're still throwing dots at the 86 87 that's what i run uh or was running uh the first half of the year on all my point guards mm -hmm. and i as well was throwing like we do a lot of the time like in like we'll inbound it i'll get it at the inbound turn around and throw it to whoever's cutting full court and that's with this as well um so 86 again totally up to you you got to know what works best for you uh but we totally believe in it and you've seen some clips or are currently seeing some clips to show kind of the proof in our personal experience with it but you got to make the choice for yourself 51 ball handle we already talked about it that's just there naturally because of the pass being so high but having the high ball handle is still good are you going to utilize it and are you going to iso that's not your job like so no um not really but is it 
good to have. Yeah, you can utilize it in very rare scenarios and it will make that scenario easier for you to execute. So it's it's good to have. And then the speed with balls up at 41. We put that up there, but again, that's just a power. So do you get the normal or the pro or whatever it is if you do that? You get normal at 40. So you get. Um, I, don't, I don't remember why I put it to 41. Maybe it was just just an I extra point, probably. Any, yeah. Yeah, you can put else. it perimeter if you wanted. So yeah. So 41. So at the 40, it helps you get that normal. So for ball handle and speed with ball, you need 40, 40 to get that normal. Yeah. For for yes. a big man, for like a bigger build. Um, uh, yes, on on guards, it's a style. on guards, it's a pro, which I messed up in my last video. But if you're on a shooting guard and you make a lock and you go 40 40, it's not normal that you unlock. It's pro that you. Actually, you get pro off the rip naturally on a guard, but having 40 40 is like that's the lowest threshold possible to still be effective is basically what a lot of people have learned. Having that 40 40, like if you want to still be able to do something, that 40 40 is going to get it to you. You can work out of the corner a lot. It gives you this little cross and you can hit a fader or whatever. Are you going to do that on a big man per se? You could. Um, so yeah, it's totally worth it. So we go up to the 40 40 threshold pretty much on a all of our builds, obviously a point guard is going to have much higher, uh, but if you're one of those builds that has the lower, just because it's not really your role, 40-40 is a great spot to be at. So when you do get the ball, you can do something if you have to. Interior defense, we talked about a little bit already. Bronze anchor, uh, super, super good badge. Um, anchor, obviously silver or gold or Hall of Fame is going to be much better. But again, we just don't run into the person that makes you have to utilize anchor enough. Like it, it'd be like having a 92 three ball and then being like me and only just shooting with your toes on the line in the corner or on your toes on the line around the arc in general. Like, there's just no real point for me to, to have that and I don't utilize it. So interior defense, you've got to play based off of your experience, what you see, what you typically run into and the game modes that you play and what makes sense. But for us, we go to 61. That's like, at least on builds like a lock um, or a big man, that's our minimum because it gets you the bronze anchor, which like you're going to be in the paint all the time. So you should have something, uh, but we don't like to invest any more than that really just because one, it costs points and we would rather put them elsewhere. And two, we don't really believe in it that much to be honest. So that's just us with our experience. You totally, again, make the choice for yourself, but that's where we're going there. Perimeter's up at 39. That's probably just there by default because of something else. So we're gonna skip past that. And block is up at 78. Again, I've showed you guys clips in a ton of videos and I'm showing you some now. Silver chase down artist is amazing. We believe in it. I've got blocks on my 6'9 shooting guard, on my 6'8 builds that have uh, silver chase down. And also you got to think you have this with the vertical being at 80 as well. So it's a lower block rating, uh, but silver is all you need. And actually Sandy had um, builds that had, I believe like Hall of, did you had a Hall of Fame block build, right? Did you? Uh, yes, I did have a 94 uh, chase down yep. uh, on one of my smaller like back end builds, okay. yes. And, and and look, I'm not saying it's not nice to like get that snatch, you know, that snatch, okay. okay. That was worded a little not great snatch is a anyways in in it, it is nice to get those blocks to get those snatch blocks um and you probably get them at a higher rate but are you playing for snatch blocks um and is it worth investing into so high that you now can't get the mid-range or the standing dunk or the rebounding or whatever it is you got to make that choice for you but for us in our experience 78 and the chase down artist is great sandy just got a snatch last night actually See, dude like <laughs> Sandy just got a snatch block last night, actually, um, and he gets them every night when we play. Like, he gets a couple of them, um, but he regularly gets a lot of blocks. All the blocks that you're seeing in this video, Sandy actually got them last night in one game, I believe. At least five of them were in one game, I remember. But I think there's eight in in the folder. Yeah, there's uh, seven, seven there's of them. Seven. Yeah, five in one game. Yeah, five of them were in one game. So block has to do a lot with timing, like a lot with timing. I, on my 6'9 shooting guard, used to get more blocks than Sandy with when I only had silver chase down. Um, then he got, and we're talking specifically chase down. Now you also got to think about I was faster and I could get him more on the break and things like that. My opponent's smaller. There's a bunch of different things, but Sandy had that way, way higher block, but his timing was not great. And we actually put him on a lock and he still like his timing wasn't great and he wasn't getting blocks at a, like at a high rate. Uh, but again, learned it. Um, but block has a lot to do with timing. Um, even me with 68 block on my smaller guards, my six, six guards, which gets you bronze chase down artists. I'm getting blocks there just because I have really good timing with that. I don't know how I'm not like 
I just, it just makes sense to me. It clicks in my head, I guess. I don't know, but timing has a lot to do with it. Um, and the silver chase down is more than enough. And again, you're talking about with your vertical at 80, um, on my other builds, my verticals at like 75 or something. Um, not on my six, six guard, but on my six, nine shooting guard, my vertical, I believe is like 70 or 75 with a 79. A chase down only because I don't get pogo stick at that height. So 79 gets me the bronze pogo stick, but 78 with the 80 vertical and all that, like totally great. Here's some clips. That should be enough proof for you guys to see. We're going to move on. Okay. So offensive rebound is at 92 and defensive rebound is at 86. Now Sandy and I have both run builds with tons of different ratings for rebound, some with only 85 rebound and they weren't a center, it just, it, but they only had an 85 offensive or defensive rebound. We've had 92, 80 combo, 92, 83, 92, 86, 90, 80, like all these different things for us in our experience. Again, one of them should be at 92 whatever one preferably offensive rebound because it's cheaper now someone came into a video and said offensive rebound wasn't cheaper maybe it's not but everyone else in the community says it is um pretty sure it is because when you put up defensive rebound past a certain point it starts raising other attributes which in turn makes it more expensive so either way Preferably offensive rebound, you should get to 92. And then defensive rebound at a minimum, I would put it at 80. However, I would recommend you put it to 85 or to 86. Now, did you go to 86 specifically, or you probably just had an extra point here and you went to you went up I one? Had an extra point. Yeah. yeah. So usually it's 85. So the 92-85 combo is going to get you the best of all of it and sandy's gonna kind of give you the details on that so yeah the 92 um offensive rebound is just what I, another non-negotiable um for a big man uh it, i'm able to snag almost 50 if not 60 percent of offensive boards um whenever and that's all positioning as well but the animations that you get from it are not for the easy ones where you have good positioning it's for when you have bad positioning and you're able to float up and get those good animations those running rebound animations and the 92 also gets you that um gold box out beast and rebound chaser and and like i said it's very affordable and then obviously you, to get those same animations you kind of want to go a little high on your defensive rebound too because if you just brought your offensive board to 92 your defensive rebound will probably just be 77 um and that can be the lowest that it can be so if you wanted to save and put it elsewhere um you can definitely do that but uh i like i said offensively you get the you get majority of the boards but also defensively if you have that higher rating it will help you keep those boards away from somebody else that has a higher defensive rebound than you do because i've definitely noticed with like if i went the bare minimum on a defensive rebound maybe i didn't get as many defensive boards because the person next to me uh on the other team had a higher offensive rebound and that they were just able to take them away from me mm -hmm. so i think investing in that defensive rebound as well um helps on that end and uh it's not just like if you have one up if that's all you need i would say that you need to have at least one high enough to get those gold badges and then invest as much as you can to at least 85 to get those good animations and to get secure those boards yeah and you even had one at 80 and i think i remember you saying this but you feel like you've seen a difference even from 80 to 85 yes 100 yeah. percent. yeah so that's in our experience we play this game a lot you don't have to believe it, but you're watching this video, I guess, for a reason. So we would recommend the 92-85 combo in whatever capacity that is, preferably your offensive rebound because it's cheaper being at 92 and now you're utilizing those points and we're we're getting fancy in the builder and just making sure we can put everything exactly where we want it and make the build as effective and, and as good as possible. So 92-86 is where we're going. Again, he just had an extra point. I mean, yeah, there's plenty of places to put it, but you're not getting anything from 78 to 79 three ball. That percentage boost that we talked about is pretty much a 76 to 78. And then from then on, I think it's like up to 85 or 86. So either way, we're going to that 86 just because that's where we put the point. And now we're going to go into speed. And this goes one. We talked about how speed helps with block like in chase down, right? Um, Actually, I did miss this and I do say this in other videos, but block and chase down artists block in general in any capacity not only helps you with blocks and chase down artists not only helps you with chase downs, Um, it just helps you like in blocks in general, but block helps you with jumping on the perimeter. Now, whether that has to do with chase down or not, I don't know. But if you invest in your block in any capacity, for instance, I have a 6-3 Kyrie build that we just made and it has 65 block. It doesn't even get you bronze rebound chaser. It does have a high vert because it has a high dunk. Um, we've got 90 driving dunk and I think a 78 vert on that build. Um, 
but it gets you better contests on the perimeter. Now, is Sandy per se gonna be out on the perimeter? I mean, if he's got a shooting big, yes, and if he's trying to play the paint or make a pinch, but then has to get back out, high block one, you're a big man. You should have it anyways, it's non-negotiable. Like we're not saying, there, there's not an option, but I am just trying to let you know kind of how else you can use it. Um, and it does help you on that. So maybe you didn't know that before. And now, you know, you know, I can give a little bit more and I can, I can commit a little bit more to this pinch, you know, and help if someone's cutting or protect that paint, but still get back out quick enough. One, because we've got as high speed as possible, but two, because you do have block and jumping does like block does help you contest that on the perimeter. It gives you much better jump animations on um, which I've showed in past videos. And I'm probably showing you guys now as well, whether it's on this build or another build, I'm not sure, but that's another way block helps. So I just wanted to hit that. Now speed, speed not only helps obviously with block or chase downs, obviously just cause you're faster, Speed in general for me, and I say this probably in all my videos now, is that speed is like the best thing you could put on your build on any build. Speed helps you everywhere. It helps you on the perimeter. It helps you on the fast break. It helps you on blocks. It helps you on getting rebounds as a big man. Speed helps you across the board in this game in any position you are. Speed is elite and you should have it. If you can get it, I think you should get it. That's my personal opinion. That's just what I think. But speed is going to also help you. We were just talking about the rebounds. It's gonna help you with the rebounds. Is he super fast? No, but again, most guys that he goes against, he's probably just as fast as, if not faster, just because we've invested in that speed all the way. Now, a lot of people wouldn't because they'd rather put maybe their block higher or whatever else it is higher. Like Sandy, for instance, used to have a much higher block. So his speed was probably much lower. Well, not anymore because this is, this is where we're at now, right? But having that speed helps you get those boards and that body positioning as well. Um, so speed is just elite across the board on any build. We're going 69 just because we can max it. And that's, again, that's just what we do. We like investing in speed. If you can get it, you should get it. So for us, it's a non-negotiable, so to speak, but on a big man, it is not. Um, I wouldn't say that, but I, I would say that for me, but that to each their own, you know? So 69 speed and 61 acceleration, we're just maxing that out. Acceleration, uh, there's a lot of controversy controversy around acceleration, um, but again, we're just not gonna be any slower or have any less stamina than we need to, because we're already giant in fat. We're seven foot and 237 pounds with like an almost max wingspan, if not max wingspan, like we're big. So we wanna be as fast as we can, um, especially just talking about getting back like on our team, we shoot a lot. We shoot a lot and we shoot very fast. So Sandy, um, at least for us, having that high speed is good because it's it's not fun going into the wreck and getting a pure inside center. And this is absolutely directed specifically at the pure inside centers who have no speed, who want you to wait for them to get all the way down the court while they move like molasses. And then they want you to pass them the ball in the paint so that they can do a back down, but they only have 45 standing dunk and they missed the meter or they missed a dunk entirely. And it took longer than the shot clock honestly, and then you get a violation. So we believe in speed. Um, and for us on our team and how we play, um, it absolutely helps. But just in general, it's gonna help you get down the court quicker so you can go for that offensive or defensive rebound or wh whatever it is. It'll help you cover the floor faster. It's very self-explanatory, but we max out speed and acceleration and those are our reasons as to why. Strength, we're going 86. Most bigs would go to 90 on my 6'8 point center. I have 90, however, I'm undersized. Again, Sandy knows what he's capable of. I would say on a big man, you shouldn't go any lower than 86. But I think you can totally go with just 86 or you can go up to 90 or you can go up to 95 or higher or anything than that. But again, Sandy knows what he's capable of. He's run builds with higher strength, lower strength, all of that. This is where it works for him the best and where he likes it and he gets those points to put him elsewhere. So 86 strength is gonna get you that gold back down punisher, which Sandy utilizes post moves and just in and, and all of that very much so that that's good there but also just 86 in general is kind of where you want to be just in strength at a minimum um on a big man anyways so i would say 86 as your minimum and other than that you got 90 95 or wherever you want basically above 86 totally go for it box out beast absolutely go to badge again this is a non-negotiable there's no real conversation per se about this you should just go here and this is what you should have uh but box out beast obviously is great back down punisher with the way that sandy plays great if you get it you know and you don't utilize it whatever it's still a good badge brick wall silver more than enough and again you're just so big anyways like it, you're gonna connect well if you if you can set screens good then you're gonna connect bulldozer nice little bonus again we talked about layup a little bit but bulldozer is a really really good badge so obviously sandy's not gonna be on the fast break and obviously he's slower so for whatever reason a smaller person catches up to him in in whatever scenario it is 
uh, he can lean into them and get that bulldozer animation um, to go up, whether it's with a dunk or a layup or whatever it is. But bulldozer is a really good badge and it's just a really nice bonus. And silver specifically is a great threshold for bulldozer just in general. Fearless finisher, great, great badge uh, for layups. Again, he's not really going for those a ton, but these are just bonuses. You're gonna have the 86 or higher strength anyways, just naturally, but these are really, really good badges. And immovable enforcer also helps a ton on in general. It's almost like open looks. It kind of works across the board in a lot of different scenarios. But on the perimeter, if Sandy does ever end up out there, or if the big man he's against is in the corner and tries to get that back door on him, obviously we've got no perimeter here. Immovable enforcer and just strength in general does help there as well as body positioning and whatnot. But Movable Enforcer, another just really good bonus of that 86 strength. Vertical up to 80. Um, you technically for your badge is only needed up to 75. But again, if we're talking like animations, rebounds, and things like that, the minimum that we're subscribing to is 80. We're gonna go with the 80 vertical. I don't know per se that I've seen a difference. Like I I don't play on a center enough. I'm sure Sandy has seen a difference, but there's definitely a difference. Okay. Like a hundred percent. Like uh, you all con other content creators also say the nine. Okay. It, the 80 vertical is just it's it's it yeah and actually with standing dunk and all that actually so even outside of the animations for rebounding vertical and dunk go hand in hand you have to have the vertical at a certain level in order to unlock certain animations and whatnot sandy knows all of those you know we're not going to get into the details about this build specifically but <clears throat> they do go hand in hand you could put your driving dunk up all the way uh, but if you don't put your vertical up, you're not gonna unlock a lot of packages. So this with the standing dunk and the rebounds and all that 80 is gonna be your minimum. Finish it off 98 stamina. You guys know we don't skimp on stamina here. We believe in stamina and I'm never gonna just not invest into it to invest elsewhere. Stamina is gonna be maxed on every single build no matter what. That's just something I believe in. I've never run a build with 95 stamina. I see people that do, that's totally fine. It's kind of just a thing for me. I just can't do it. So we're gonna max out the stamina. So this is our Joker build. It doesn't get shades of Joker, but it is a glass cleaning three level threat. I actually didn't know that this build had three level in it when I was saying that it was a three level threat, um, but it is. We just went over all of it. And you know, if you don't agree, it doesn't matter because 2K says that it's a three level threat. So we've got a glass cleaning, which means it's elite on defense in the role that it is playing in the paint and as a center, and it's a three level threat. It can score everywhere. So what else do you need? You're elite on your defense and you're elite at every level you wanna be on the offense. So good build overall, love it. Um, I've loved having Sandy on this build. Um, I'm running the point. So having someone I can bail out to in the paint when I need it, if I can't get open or no one else is open, I can always just be like, go to the free throw line or get in there, you know? And he gets in there, throw it to him. Everyone sits and we watch and we watch him back down and we wait to see if it's gonna be a post fade, a drop step to a lay, a drop step to a standing, a pump fake to a yam, meter or fast twitch, whatever it is. It's a really fun build to watch and across the board, like it's just really, really good. And I enjoy having it on my team personally. And I know Sandy enjoys running it. Um, he's made a lot of different centers. We've we've both made a lot of different builds just in general, um, but this is like, Sandy's build. This is this is his his go-to is the one that he's on the most. Um, and he mainly plays a role as our center. So this is the one, and he's been running it for a while. This isn't a fresh build that we just made recently. You've had this build for this is probably the newest iteration for season four. That's okay. What we're in. Yeah, season so, four. So yeah. so yeah, so he's like he's fine-tuned the build. Like you said, he he's had higher close shot, he brought it down. He's had higher or he's had lower standing dunk, he's brought it up like we, we tend to do that. Um, I even remade my SGA build um, that I have a video on. That build's not bad by any means. I still like it, but I did remake it in a way that I just thought fit better for me. So we like to fine tune our builds and that's just what happens. One, new seasons come out, new animations come out, new things, new requirements, things like that. And then two, you just learn as we play the game, we just learn and you, know, you either wanna add things to your bag or you realize that you don't use that as much as you thought you did. For instance, me, my builds don't have post control anymore. I love working in the post, but on my guard, I just don't need it. And I run bigger guards, 6'6". Six, six. I can absolutely be effective in the post, um, but I've actually taken away post control and I've invested elsewhere now to be more versatile. So as you play, you kind of figure out what you do need, what you don't need, and, and you just fine tune things. And that's kind of what we do as well. So this is Sandy's final, so to speak, iteration of this. We've even talked about like, what could we change? Is there anything we could change or whatever? We haven't come up with something yet. 
per se, um, or that I know of, but uh, it's it's just something we're kind of always interested in. And we kind of always nerd out in the builder just in general, which is why we've got the builder secrets. But Sandy's the one who I'm in the builder with all the time, just nerding out, we're sending builds back and forth. I'll be making a build, he'll make a different, for instance, the Kyrie builds that we made. I made one, he was watching me build it. And by the time I was done with mine, he's like, oh, look, I made this version of it. And I was like, okay, cool. I like that one too, let's make both. And we're gonna give you guys a video with that. So either way, I hope this video helped you guys. Um, if it did in any capacity, in any way, please a like, a comment, a sub, any of that, none of it, do whatever you want, but I would appreciate it. Again, it helps us over here. Again, we are on social media and all of that. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And I'll catch you in the next one.